name is Jim Sonnet. I'm here uh, on behalf of John Brooks LLC, and uh, I'm the it was the applicant. What's your address? Pardon? Your address? I live at 2425 Westwood Drive in Bella. All right, thank you. And uh, what I wanted to point out is this area we're trying to uh, rezone this area, which you've got in your package and all. But I wanted you to um, see a you know a, a, an aerial shot showing the, the different uh, buildings here and the closest of the campus and and uh, other multifamily units. I'm not going to speak any further than this. We have uh, quite a few people here in the audience that are in favor of this uh, rezoning request, and so I'm going to give them a chance to talk and uh, my, my time for me. All right. Are there any questions for the speaker? Should I ask? I understand you designed this. The design of the buildings. No, the you. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't catch what your part was in this. I am with Turner Brooks LLC. Okay. The okay. You're not the developer. Uh -huh. I am Turner Brooks uh, LLC is the developer, and my name is Jim Simon and I. And okay. I am, uh, with Turner Brooks LLC. So yes, yes. All right, so you've got 180 bedrooms that you plan on renting. Yes. And you've only got 180 parking spaces, six of which are going to be handicapped. So are you going to require six of those rooms go to people needing handicapped parking spaces, or is it just... Well, you know, that's uh, that design is set up by the architects right now. Mm -hmm. And so um, we haven't really been able to completely design, engineer everything because we're pretty good at conceptual To answer your question, there is only 180 space. Uh, whatever the handicap requirements is, we will need because we will have to. Um, we uh, are not the requirements of the park. Yeah, I was here when we changed those requirements, but I can tell you, at least from my perspective, it was never the intent that each bedroom was going to be an individual rental unit. But be that as it may, if, if we've got what we've got. I was just curious, but that parking space seems awful. Okay, well, again, this is acceptable. Well, I'm going to ask the Okay. <clears throat> and this may be premature, but do you know if the proposed detention pond, if that would be a dry pond or a wet pond? I couldn't say right now. Again, this is all perceptual. Um, whatever will work best and serve the purpose. But um, there's no way to spend the money to take the design and uh, engineering for the architecture at this point in time when you're trying to go to zoning. Mm -hmm. That's really above my pay grade. Yeah, yeah. Can, you just, can you please speak into the uh, microphone so people in the back of the room can hear your yes. comments? Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. Any other questions for the speaker? No, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Student housing, and let's say it's 180 student housing, and it's all filled in too. 
campus. You're going to wake up in the morning and you go to class, you're not going to get in your car and drive to campus. Because you are on campus. It's, so traffic is reduced by students driving through town and through the neighborhoods now to get to the issue. All right? And then we say class is over and you want to handle it. You're not going to go down the desert drive and look for a You're going to get on Bay Street and you're going to drive that to the commercial area. So just basic common sense tells me that traffic will be reduced in this area, in the neighborhood area. Um, I just can't imagine that somebody would real swiftly go back into this area to look for commercial products. Um, it just makes sense that they return to the University of Bay Street or out to the Bay Street or the so I don't think traffic is really going to be um, an issue. One of the other uh, concerns that has been pointed out to you guys is the parking, which Mr. Rector asked about. Um, the assumption here is that every student has a car, and I can tell you that that's just not true. We manage over a thousand rental units in, in Valdosta, and we uh, have a large Korean contingency at BSU, it's growing every quarter or every semester, and we have a large foreign contingency. They come here, and we have to provide them weekly transportation to the grocery stores and the Walmart and wherever else they may need to buy supplies because they don't own cars. Okay, so to assume that every bedroom comes with a car is false. And I do believe that the parking regulation that is designed by the city studied all of that. And it was proposed to accommodate parking with the assumption that not every bedroom would have a car. And so, you know, you'll hear that the parking is going to overflow onto the streets. And if it does, they, the cars get towed. They'll get towed one time and that person will never park there. So um, it's monitored by the police, it's monitored by a private building company that, the, that the, this uh, project will hire to monitor and uh, to regulate the parking. Another thing we'll talk about is scale. We have a proposal is for three bedrooms, and um, it's the only way economically that this project works is to have three stores to, to uh, get the density needed to support the project. Mr. Chair, can I just kind of move it over closer because some people are not able to hear back in there. Tom, if you will move okay. that over closer to where you can right. say in the mic as much as you can. Right. What I have here, this is some examples. Uh, these, these pictures are what's there now, and this is essentially a proposal of what the building will look like, which is consistent with up and down Bay Street. Across the street, you have a four-story PD complex. You have a four-story early childhood education building. Another block down, you have a four-story student dorm. Around the corner on the corner of Brookwood and Oak Street, this very board recommended approval of a four-story building with parking and retail. Um, so I think the precedent of a more than two-story building has clearly been set in this area. And with the setbacks that are in place from the Bay Tree University Corridor Overlay District, the setbacks accommodate not having buildings just dominating the streetscape. Yeah, keep that in mind and look at it. This is the, this is the uh, picture of the basic corridor of where the project will be right here. And with the uh, architectural scale that I showed you, it will be consistent. The other issue here is the, is the rights of the, the current owners. You've heard a lot. I've heard a lot. I own property right here. Um, a lot of the people who signed the petition, I'm afraid, and they have the right to sign the petition, they're taxpayers, so they have property in the area. They're just, they just want to limit competition. They're out of town owners, they're non-owner occupants in this area. Think about Matt Martin's own calculation, 72% of this neighborhood is non-owner occupied. That doesn't diminish their right to request or to oppose this zoning, but I think you need to look at maybe what is their motive? Is it really to limit competition? Maybe, maybe not, but this is a land use issue and not an economic issue. And, and, I, and again, we respect their right 100% to come out and be very vocal. Next time I have a zoning case, I may hire them to 
take up our calls if they would. They're, they're very diligent, and I appreciate that. No problem with that. I think you got to boil down to the common sense facts of this case. Of this, of this, um, <coughs> Any questions for the speaker? Yes, yeah. I do. Um, is the need for the 180 beds market driven, or is that how did you come up with um, with the justification for the need for that many beds in that development? Well, you know, there's a lot of risk involved with speculating on 180 bed units, um, 180 units, and from a big picture, 30,000 feet. I think um, you know BSU enrollment has been challenged. There's no doubt. I think uh, probably some of that may be due to lack of student choice for housing. A lot of students live in neighborhoods. <laughs> a lot of students. Uh, be respectful of the speakers. Yeah, I mean, it's all about choices. There, there, there are other choices. I didn't say there, are, there aren't other choices, but to be able to walk to campus is very attractive if you're a student. You not have to drive to park. parking is challenging at BSU. <laughs> And so, you know, this is about location. This is uh, adjacent to the university. And if I'm a parent and I'm bringing my kid down to Boston State on a recruiting visit, and I see all these housing options adjacent to the university, maybe the enrollment increases. You know, so I think all the factors of the 180 beds are, are considered with market and with location and enhanced. Can I ask questions? Uh, you mentioned that the PE complex with a four-story structure, that's not true. It might be 30 or 40 feet high, but it's a two-story structure. Um, so you can't use that precedence. Um, you also mentioned another building that had three or four stories. The building that you showed the picture of, the complex across the street, that's a two-story building. The picture you showed was... Okay. Um, you mentioned another dorm. Is that the one on Sestella Avenue? No, it's the one on Oak Street. shows the Mediterranean architecture similar to the old Little Joe Pool. Right. So, so that is that is what we're going to do. This bottom picture. Okay. It's actually a Little Joe that's been uh, photoshopped. And another story been added. It looks good. So, um, My next question to that is, and, and I see the site, as, as Jim has said earlier, we, we, we got, you know, it's not fixed, of course. Uh, I don't know if there's any way to have that facade all facing one well, if that's possible or not. And Jim, if I could tell, I don't know if it's possible to do a horseshoe application there mm -hmm. with all of them looking in. So you, from Bay Tree, you would get that all that one facade at, at, as constant. Okay. Well, that's certainly um, you know this this plan was it's tough. fixed last week. You know, uh, edited last week to meet the setbacks that we had overlooked, and so you know. Further consideration for that can certainly be And I'm just looking at like building A, hopefully, I don't know, I, you know with, with the park is, I would think for sure that that rendering would be facing Bay Tree. Yeah, but, but the requirement in the, uh, I'm sorry, I mean, interrupted, the requirement in the Bay Tree University Court of Overlay requires modulation on the street side to, to give architectural features that are, you know, appealing. And, and, and that's that what I'm saying. Well, it is, but looking at building B and building C would, would be a, a different facing. You know, what would you, how would you do that same facade on the side, if, or would you? Uh, I'm not sure, Frank. Okay. I'm, that's a little bit like gifted above my pay grade, but I'm sure it can be accomplished to put, you know, establish continuity to the site. All right, any other questions? Being there, we appreciate the time. Thank you. In the interest of time, we will take one more speaker in favor of this request.
My name is Ed Barr. I live at 2609 Green Meadow Drive. Appreciate very much the opportunity to uh, speak for a few minutes today. I'm not in any way connected with this um, development. I'm a property owner. I'm here wishing to sell property to um, the developers. I feel like I have a very close connection to this neighborhood and that my family built a house there in 1949. We moved in in 1950. I lived in that house from 1950 to 65, and I rode my bicycle to Valhalla High School and walked to BSU, and I'm still very close to the neighborhood and I'm still own the house. Um, for full disclosure, I will say it's 150 feet north of the uh, neighborhood in question, but it's on Azalea. That's the neighborhood that I grew up in, my friends lived in. I delivered the paper in it probably, and at one time to tell you the name of every person there. And um, when I bought one of the pieces of property, I bought it from Miss Dauber, who built the house. I'm the second owner. I bought it as an investment. And um, she remembered me as her, her paper boy. I came back here in 1974 to work in the music department at Valdosta State. Part of my job was um, recruiting music students. It was very important when I um, had a student visit that they were positively impressed by the look of the campus. And we probably have um, the nicest looking campus in the university system, thanks to the Whitehead Endowment and people who are very conscious um, about the beautification of the campus, the maintaining of uh, architectural theme. Um, I think it's been very positive for uh, BSU. It's my feeling as an owner that this building will further enhance the development. I remember the discussion when uh, we were trying to um, think about the PE complex and the uh, Luke House and the Crosby House and the Barnado House and some opposition. Those houses are gone, but there's a very nice PE complex that's there today. As I look around this room today, I see um, university, distinguished university professors. I see scientists. I see an architect. I see several builders. I see businessmen, and I see residents of this neighborhood. I think there's one thing that we can all agree on, and there's going to be a development in this area. Um, it may be a jiffy market, it may be a dollar store, any number of businesses. I think um, looking at what I've seen in this development, it's an outstanding development. I had, I did not even know the developer until very recently. In disclosure, I will say I know his brother and I knew his dad and I know it's a family with a great reputation and one who's building the developments and speak for themselves. I cannot imagine, and, I, and I'm sorry when people in a neighborhood, a neighborhood that, that I have great fondness for, I'm sorry that people are, are not in favor. I'm genuinely, I, I wish they were saying, what, what can we do to make this better? How can we help? But I know that's not the case. But it's my feeling that it will greatly enhance as, as a student enters what is now the gateway to the campus. You, you can't drive up to West Hall. You can drive, you can see a nice view rather than seeing five rental properties that are um, not in the best of condition now or a very nice building matching architectural theme new I think it would not greatly greatly enhance and as I said I think that's the one thing that we can all agree on that there will be a development there and um, what Mr. Sinek is willing to do, I think, should be given every consideration. Thank you very much. Any questions for the speaker? If not, we appreciate that. Uh, we took about 20 minutes for those speaking for, and so we will allot 20 minutes for those speaking against uh, this application. But if there's anyone in the audience who would like